when I'm having a class um, that is the, that um, talks about the problem of transition and when we start with this theoretical analysis I find it easier to start with market economy and this is because the fundamental um, fundamental assumptions of market economy may seem somewhat natural to us well usually when I ask the question you know the basic economy questions such as what to produce how much to produce and for whom to produce people usually give two answers well the first more obvious one is that it depends on the demand. So the amount of what we produce and what we produce depends on what people want to buy. The second answer related to the first one is that it also depends on production capabilities. So in those very natural responses, we incorporate a basic economic challenge, which is how to satisfy unlimited uh, wants of people with the use of limited resources. What also comes naturally to us is the assumption that private property is something obvious, is something natural, and that people in their everyday economic decisions act rationally. This, and this uh, rationality um, means that in every consumer decision that we make, so whenever we decide what to buy and how much um, to buy, we are driven by the need to maximize our satisfaction. Uh, economists would use the term utility here. Whereas producers, obviously, they act in order to maximize their profits. Um, so this is this basic um, rational behind our decisions. What is a little bit more difficult is the question regarding the role of the government. Well, some people would say that the government should be very active in the economy. So in the cases of you know, recession, in the case of crisis, the government must definitely uh, step up, it must boost the demand. And this will be the position taken by a uh, more Keynesian um, approach to economy, by Keynesian economists. Uh, the second very different approach would be the one represented by classical school. And um, they would say that the government should actually stay away. So it should not get actively involved in the economy and assume the position of something what they call state uh, night watchman state. Um, regardless of those differences, so regardless of our stand on the issue of government, we would all agree that the fundamental mechanism of coordination is market. So to put it differently, uh, every single economic decision is made on the market. The basic rationale behind this thinking, so the basic assumption on which this market economy is based, um, is efficiency. So the goal for every economic action um, is to achieve the maximization of the efficiency. We want to be efficient with the use of our resources, um, with the production, um, with everything in which we, we, we get involved. In contrary to those capitalist ideas of efficiency, socialism was based on totally different logic. Um, it aimed at the maximization of equality. So it was not about efficiency, it was about equality. Um, this idea can well be illustrated in a very straightforward slogan, which was from each according to their ability, to each according to their contribution. And um, that is why socialist uh, activists, socialist politicians, socialist economists always promoted redistribution of resources. Uh, this was the way to achieve this um, equality and equality in both opportunities and outcomes. Uh, to put this idea in practice, um, Karl Marx proposed the substitution of Pub, uh, private property with the public property. What was the problem with private property? Why this was so important that we establish a public property? Well, there were three basic reasons. Firstly, um, revenue coming from private property was simply seen as unearned. It was unjust, it was unjust. Um, private property was also seen as a fundament uh, on which the whole capitalist system was based, and as such, since capitalist system was condemned by Marx, um, so was the private property. And finally, Marxian economy 
was based on this assumption that we can successfully change the self-coordination mechanism, so the mechanism of the coordination that is done on the market, with the higher conscious harmonization of economic action. What did it mean? It simply meant the introduction of central planning. Um, and here, when you look at the slide, you would see the differences between market economy and centrally planned economy. The first uh, three we actually covered, so in the first position you would see the different approaches to the ownership, dominant position of private property vis-a-vis -vis dominant position of state ownership in centrally planned economy. Centrally planned economy is also based on bureaucratic coordination, by which I mean that this is the, the central bureau that decides upon the allocation of the resources, something that in the market economy is done on the market. Consequently, we have different mechanisms regarding prices. Well, in market economy, prices are determined by market forces, which means by demand and supply. However, in centrally planned economy, prices are very often set by the government. The fourth difference regards elasticity, and this is the result of planning. Low elasticity of the economy in centrally planned economy is the obvious um, consequence of relatively stiff central plans. So when, um, when demand changed, it's required time for the plan to adjust the production. In a market economy, we don't um, see the same problem happening because um, production is, if I might say, naturally adjusted to the needs of the customer. So production reacts to the shifts of, um, of demand and that's why um, this system um, is characterized by uh, higher elasticity. The fifth difference is of fundamental um, importance and this is about um, financial discipline. Well, in market economy, what we see is the kind of obvious mechanism um, that if entrepreneurs m make a mistake, if uh, their actions are um, you know, ineffective, they will ultimately go bankrupt. Something that is not happening, that cannot happen in centrally planned economy. Because companies are owned by the state, in case of any problems, they can be supplied from the central, um, from the government funds. So it means in reality that we are not going to witness any bankruptcies in centrally planned economy. Um, and the result of this um, is very important when we look at the question of effectiveness and innovation. Well, if you have so budget, soft budget constraint, there, are no, there is no stimulus for um, the companies to be innovative. Why would they? Whereas in market economy, innovation is a kind of a consequence of um, high competitiveness and it is necessary in order to, um, to get advantage um, on the market. These basic differences that we just discussed can well be illustrated um, on those two figures. Um, figure two represents the market mechanism of coordination. So what you see here is the demand curve, supply curve, and the point of equilibrium. Figure number one um, explains the problem of shortages in the economy. And it is based on a very insightful analysis done by Peter Batke, um, who shows why the price paid by the customers in shortage economy in reality is higher than the official price that is set by the government. So let us uh, look at this, um, at this figure for a second. Um, let us start with the setting of the official price, which is set at the quite um, low level below the equilibrium point. And the result is obviously the situation of shortage, which means that, that there is higher uh, demand than supply. In this situation, if the price was free, um, suppliers would have incentives firstly to adjust the price to very big demand and consequently also um, change their produ production um, and um, offer more products on the market. In this situation, however, when the prices are stiff and they are set by the government, um, what suppliers do is that they start expecting 
something which Batke calls non-monetary costs. So those costs may take various forms. They may take the forms of bribes, uh, black market gains or non-market privileges, whatever it can in reality be something that is additional to the monetary cost. So the end goal and result is that the consumer is paying, is paying higher price. Um, and let me explain what the main uh, concept behind transition is. I think that the easiest possible definition would be that transition is a path from here, from this model of shortage economy to there, which is this model of market coordination. I know it is a very, uh, it may seem as a very um, easy model. It is obviously a simplification of reality, but I think that certain points are very well illustrated on those um, easy models.